Greetings, everyone. My name is Dana Vermeer, and we're coming to you from Cleveland, Georgia, Mountain Air uh, Air Park. And I put this little video together to thank the guys at Loomlight, especially Don, for helping me with the problem. Uh, what we have is a 1975 Blanca Decathlon, and uh, the airplane was restored about 10 years ago. And as you can see over my shoulder right here, we got a hole in the side of the fuselage. Well, what originally fit in there was a plastic air scoop. Uh, the plane is 40 years old, and over time, plastic got a little bit brittle, and it finally broke and came apart, and unfortunately, that part is no longer made. Uh, they do make some replacement parts, but the replacement parts are bigger than the hole here, and trying to enlarge a hole in the side of the fuselage and not tear up the new paint and all that was going to be problematic. So I turned to the guys at Tulumalite, especially Don, and they were able to put together a uh, two-part mold for me and make, uh, make the new part. I have the new part here, uh, just to show you guys what it looks like. fits inside the fuselage like this, uh, air blows in through here and then it drives it inside the cabin there and then it's able to turn inside the hole so in the winter time when you don't want all that cold air blowing inside, um, you can turn it out of the way. Uh, the part was kind of unique because as you can see, um, it kind of it's flat across the bottom then it convexes out and then curves back around so it actually pops in that hole and it's not screwed in that hole or anything it's just the the size of the uh, opening of the diameter this being larger than this it had to fit in there so the plastic had to be flexible enough so that it would squeeze together as you can see it'll squeeze but without breaking I'll show you how it works real quick just slides in from the hole in the back it just fits in there just like that uh, so in the summertime, it faces forward, air blows and goes into the cabin, and then the uh, wintertime, you can just reach in with your hand and spin it around and make it so the air doesn't uh, freeze you out of the cockpit. So again, thank you, Don. Thank you guys, Illumilite. Excellent job uh, fixing a problem that I was uh, really concerned that there was nothing I was going to be able to do, and I certainly didn't want a hole inside of my airplane. So again, thank you, and everybody take care. Here we have an air vent for a 1975 Blanca Decathlon that we're going to make a mold of and replicate. A new vent couldn't be sourced so we're going to demonstrate how to mold and cast one yourself. To start out, take synthetic clay and pack the back cavity of the vent. We'll shave off any excess clay that's on the face of the vent to ensure that we have a clean parting line. Once the back cavity has been filled, we're going to join it with about a half an inch of synthetic clay as a base. The base along with the clay that's packed in the back of the vent will act as the first side of the mold while we pour the second half. Once the vent is secured to the base of synthetic clay, we can go ahead and add a mold box and in this instance we're going to use a container where we cut off the bottom and we're simply going to press that down into the clay to create a reservoir to contain the silicone. We use one of our clay tools to smooth the clay to the inside of the container to prevent silicone from seeping down the side. A pencil is also being used to place holes as locators into the clay so that the silicone will pick up these locators and the two halves of the silicone will locate nicely together. We pre-measured our base and catalyst and we'll mix until all the striations have disappeared and we have a consistent color. Now we're ready to pour our silicone. For the first side of the mold, we're going to use High Strength 2, which has a diameter about 25A, and will give us enough support to support this side of the mold. Once the first half of the mold is cured, we can flip the mold box over and gently remove all of the blue synthetic clay. It's important not to disturb the master, which is embedded in the first half of the silicone. You want to leave that seal intact to ensure that no fresh silicone seeps in underneath your original. A little alcohol and a rag is used to clean the residue. The next and very important step is to apply mold release to the first half of cured silicone. Lumilite's rubber to rubber mold release was used here. We applied about three coats with about five minutes of drying in between coats. For the interior of the vent, we decided to use high strength three, which is softer, about a 10A material, so that when the time comes to demold the part, it flexes out of the way but yet holds its form during the casting process. 
Once cured, you can remove the mold box. Once the two halves are separated, you can remove your original, and now you're ready to cast. You can see here the flexibility of the high strength 3 on the interior plug. Once you've determined what casting resin to use, mix it according to directions, and slowly pour the resin into the female side of the mold. The male half can then be gently placed in the top, ensuring that the locators line up perfectly and the mold halves come together. Because of the thinner walls on this part, we do recommend preheating your mold to promote the curing of the resin. Once the resin is cured, separate the two halves, and you now have a replica of your original. Aluminite casting resins can be dyed or painted according to what's desired. If you have any questions about this application or any other application, please give us a call. We can be reached at 1-800-447-9344.